welcome i welcome you all to this lecture in the course samasa in paninian grammar 2 as is our practice let us begin with the recitation of the mangala charana vishvesham satchidanandam वंदेहम योखिल जगत चरीकर्ति बरी भर्ति संजरी हर्ति लीलया विश्वेशम सच्चिदानंदम वंदेहम योखिल जगत चरीकर्ति बरी भर्ति संजरी हर्ति लीलया इन दिस लेक्चर वी shall deal with the karak theory and in order to understand the basics of the karak theory we need to first look at the compositionality of the meaning as stated in the paninian grammar and in the paninian grammatical tradition so the word is artha which means meaning and there are three arthas three basic meanings three types of basic meanings available to us the first one is called prakriti artha which is the meaning of the prakriti or the meaning of the root second is pratyaya artha pratyaya artha is the meaning of the pratyaya or meaning of the suffix and the third one is sambandhartha meaning of the sambandha or meaning of the co-occurrence of the prakriti and pratyaya and so on and so forth these are the three basic concepts as far as the meaning compositionality is concerned let us study them one by one prakrityartha let us study first prakrityartha means meaning of the prakriti or meaning of the root as we know there are two types of roots stated in paninian grammar one is dhatu a verbal root and the other one is pratipadika a nominal root both of them are referred to as prakriti and the meaning of both of them therefore will be referred to as prakrityartha or meaning of the root dhatu is a verbal root which denotes verbal action and this action is such that it is to be accomplished with the help of the elements thought of by the speaker as performing different roles that is the nature of the verbal action i repeat dhatu is a verbal root which denotes an action and this action is such that it is to be accomplished with the help of the elements thought of by the speaker as performing different roles and here are the examples gama is the verbal root or dhatu and it means action of going but is another verbal root which means action of reading likha is another verbal root which means the action of writing all these three 
they are the prakritarthas they are the meaning of the verbal root now let us look at the other verbal root other root namely the pratipadika this is a nominal root and it denotes a substance gender number etc now the examples of pratipadika are first gopala which is a person and this is masculine and also singular similar is the example of nadi a flow of water current this is feminine and singular vana is another example of pratipadika which means a collection of trees it is neuter in gender and also singular in number all these meanings they are the meanings of the pratipadikas therefore they are the pratipadikarthas in other words they are the prakrityarthas this is very important because now after looking at the prakrityartha we shall go to the pratyayartha pratyayartha is the meaning of the pratyaya or meaning of the suffix this is that meaning which links the meaning of the prakrityarthas or meanings of the root for example link of the meaning of one nominal root with another nominal root is established through a pratyayartha also link of the meaning of one nominal root with one verbal root is also established by the meaning of the suffix or the pratyayartha that is the function of the pratyayartha link of the meaning of one nominal root with another nominal root and here are the examples and janya janaka bhav is such a meaning swaswami bhav is another example and avayava avayavi bhav is the other example these are the meanings which link one nominal root with the other nominal root janya janaka bhav is the descendant and father in that kind of relationship swaswami bhav is owner owned and avayava avayavi bhav is the part and whole relationship link of the meaning of one nominal root with one verbal root is denoted in the following manner if we take for example gama which means an action of going then gopala which means a person and the gender is masculine and the number is singular and then the pratyayartha provides the link of this meaning gopala of gopala with the meaning of the verbal root gama which is doer of the action now doer of the action is a meaning element which links the meaning of gopala with the meaning of gama similarly vana which is a collection of trees neuter in gender and singular in number is linked with the verbal root gama and its meaning through the pratyayartha which is place aim to be reached so place aim to be reached is the pratyayartha which links vana and its artha with the verbal root gama and its artha these are the examples of the pratyayarthas linking 
different types of prakrityartha. And it is these second type of pratyarthas which link the verbal root with the nominal root which is going to be very important when we study the Karaka theory. And the Karaka theory is to be studied because the Samasa formation theory is based on the Karaka theory. As we saw, sentence is the input of the Samasa and Pratipadika is the output of the process of generating a Samasa. Now let us look at the Sambandhartha or the meaning of the co-occurrence. The fact that the words are uttered together indicates that they are bound together, makes them one unit which is interrelated. Now interrelation of words results in euphonic combination arising out of this co-occurrence and that is called Sandhi in Sanskrit. The fact that the words are uttered together indicates that their meanings are also bound together, makes them one meaning unit which is interrelated. Interrelation of meanings results in specification of meanings and pruning of the overgenerated meaning template. This is what is the Sambandhartha. These are the three types of meanings available in the sentence and sentence meaning. With this much information about the meanings in the sentence, let us turn to the study of the Karaka theory. Karaka theory is extremely important because it is this theory which brings together padas to form a sentence. And sentence is what is an input in the process of compounding. It is important to note certain things when we study Karaka theory. First, what do we do when we speak? It is important to remember that we as speaker decide about the action we want to describe. Two, then we decide who all are the participants in this action and what roles these different elements play in the description of this action. After doing this, we then select the words which express the action as well as the entities that participate in that action. And secondly, we select the words which express the roles they play. This is in accordance with the process of speech production described earlier. Now, action and the entities participating in the action are selected from the lexicon of entities. They get expressed by the Dhatu and the Pratipadika respectively. Action is denoted by the Dhatu or the verbal root and the entities participating in the action are expressed by 
the pratipadikas, the nominal roots. The sets of dhatus and the sets of pratipadikas are much bigger sets of elements, theoretically infinite. However, the roles that these elements, entities play in the accomplishment of the action, that number is smaller, they are six roles as described in Paninian grammar. These roles also show the interrelation between the elements and the action. These roles are called karaka and these karakas are expressed by what is known as the vibhakti. We repeat that the roles that the different elements denoted by the pratipadikas play in the accomplishment of the action denoted by the verbal root are called karaka and these karakas are expressed by different vibhaktis. Let us highlight what is more important. These roles are called karaka and these roles are expressed by the vibhakti. This is to be remembered. Most important is that the roles which are called karaka are the nature of meaning and the vibhakti suffixes that express the karaka are the explicit words which become audible. We repeat, the karaka is meaning the roles which are called karaka, their nature is that of meaning. This is to be clearly understood. And the vibhakti suffixes that express the karaka are the explicit words. These words are audible. Karaka is the meaning, vibhakti is the word. Karakas are only six in number, whereas vibhaktis are 18 thing suffixes stated in Ashtadhyayi 3.4.78 onwards plus 21 sub suffixes stated in Ashtadhyayi 4.1.2. Once again, karakas are only six and vibhaktis are 18 things of excess stated in 3.4.78 onwards plus 21 sub suffixes stated in the ashtadhyayi 4.1.2. We are highlighting this mainly because we see that there is quite a lot of confusion about the understanding of the nature of karaka as well as vibhakti. We find that several people say that there are eight karakas in Sanskrit. When they say this, they are probably referring to the vibhaktis. And they are, in fact, considering karaka and vibhakti as one, which should not be done and we have to be very careful in stating what is a karaka and what is its nature and what is a vibhakti and what is its nature. So karakas are meanings, they are only six. Vibhaktis are 18 things of excess stated in 3478 and 21 sub suffixes stated in 412. In other words, vibhaktis are the pratyayas and karakas are the pratyayarthas that we have studied 
in this lecture before. Vibhaktis are pratyayas and karakas are the pratyayarthas. There is one more thing that needs to be clarified. When we use the word vibhakti, generally it is understood to be a reference to the 21 sub suffixes. This is the common general understanding. Technically, however, in Paninian grammar, along with these 21 sub suffixes, even the 18 thing suffixes are also termed as vibhaktis. This should be remembered. Along with the 21 sub suffixes, even the 18 thing suffixes are also termed as vibhaktis. This is done by the Sutra 14104 in the Ashtadhyayi, which is vibhaktischa. What it means is tingaha supascha vibhakti saudnyaha bhavanti. Ting as well as sup are termed as vibhakti. These are the soups which we have studied before already, but let us revisit them. They are 21 suffixes. Already mentioned in a tabular format in seven rows and three columns. Seven rows indicate the case Prathama, Dvitiya, Tritiya and the columns indicate the number, singular, dual and plural. These 21 subsuffixes are S, O, As in Prathama, in Dvitiya, Am, O, As, in Tritiya, Abhyam, Bhis, in Chaturthi, Abhyam, Bhis, in Panchami, As Bhyam Bhyas, in Shashthi, As Os Aam, and in Saptami, E Os Su. These are the Vibhaktis, these are also known as Vibhaktis. And these are the Subanta forms. Rama is a Pratipadika to which we add the Subs mentioned on the previous slide and then we derive these 21 subantas Ramaha, Ramau, Ramaha, Ramam, Ramau, Raman, Ramena, Ramabhyam, Ramaihi, Ramaya, Ramabhyam, Ramepyaha, Ramat, Ramabhyam, Ramepyaha, Ramasya, Ramayoho, Ramanam, Rame, Ramayoho, Rameshu. These are the 21 subanta forms. In other words, these are the 21 vibhaktyanta forms. These are such forms at the end of which appears a vibhakti, a sup vibhakti, sup pratyaya. Obviously, the meaning of these words is a combination, as we have already shown, of the pratipadika and its artha, namely Rama, and the pratyayartha of Sa, and its co-occurrence. Similarly, Rama, the meaning of this word will be a combination of the meaning of Rama, the pratipadika, and Au, the pratyaya, prakrityartha, and the pratyayartha, and also their co-occurrence. This will happen in all the 21 forms. These are the 18 things. We have studied them before, but let us revisit them. These are divided into two groups the, into, of nine. The first nine and the second nine, they are termed as Parasmaipada and Atmanipada respectively. 
they are divided into three rows and three columns the rows indicate the person and the columns indicate the number the parasmai pada suffixes are ti tas chi si tas th mi vas mas and the atmane pada suffixes are ta atam jha tas atam dvam i vahi mahi these are the ting pratyayas and these pratyayas are called vibhaktis and so the meanings assigned to these pratyayas are called vibhaktyarthas in other words they are called pratyayarthas when these pratyayarthas are attached to the prakrityarthas the meaning of the pada is derived now these are the tinganta forms nayati nayatah nayanti nayasi nayatah nayath nayami nayavah nayamah these are the forms of the parasmai pada and nayate nayate nayante nayase nayate nayadve naye nayavah nayamah these are the forms of the atmane pada these are the tinganta forms which means that these are the forms at the end of which appears a ting pratyaya ting pratyaya is a vibhakti therefore these are the forms which are vibhaktyanta the meanings of these forms will be a combination of the meaning of the verbal root ni in this case and the meaning of the vibhakti t for example and their co-occurrence this is how the meaning will be determined in case of even nayatah as well and so on and so forth now there are six karakas stated in the paninian grammar they are karta which is translated as agent karma as object karana instrument sampradana recipient apadana point of separation and adhikarana location to summarize the six karakas act as representation of an individual viewpoint and individual world view they form the core of the meanings meaning element in the sentence the relation of entities with the action these meanings feed into the theory of compounding the meanings which are interrelated in this manner become eligible to be used in the sentence these are the texts referred to thank you very much